Hey, welcome. Um, got a lot of good comments on the video I did that whips and spurs are cruel. And of course, my point of my video was that they're not cruel if they are used properly. So now I want to do another one on, on bits. Um, bits are not cruel. They can be if they're used improperly. So I'm going to show you here in a moment the improper way, the way to hurt a horse with a bit. Then I'm going to show you the proper way to use a bit so that it does not hurt them. Um, first, a little house cleaning. I had several people, several comments about, gee, we're glad you're back. And I, I admit, I didn't do hardly any videos this winter. It was cold. I was doing a construction project most of the winter. I didn't do hardly any training. I do have a couple of colts coming in, several in the next few weeks. So hopefully we'll get back to some training stuff before too long. And I, but I do appreciate your comments anytime I try to answer them. And um, also, if you don't know this, the way we get paid on YouTube is when you, the more time you watch the commercial, the more we get paid. And it's not much, it's a few pennies here and there, but it adds up. All right, first of all, let's talk about bitless. Um, that's a big fad these days. Ride your horse without a bit, and then you're gonna be kind and gentle and loving on your horse. Uh, and that's not necessarily true. It can be. And let me say, if you don't have good hands, by good hands, we mean slow hands. If you tend to be jerky, then by all means, do not ride your horse with a bit. That's mean. Don't do it. Okay. Um, you can use a traditional style hackamore like this. And I have a video that I put up oh, a month or so ago where I introduced this hackamore to one of my horses. Sorry, I've got it kind of tangled here. And a good, a good traditional style hackamore like this are fairly expensive. I think this one was around $400. So, you know, that's not something that just about it, that everybody can invest in and, or maybe even should invest in it. Um, but they do work really well if you know how to use them. And these are fairly mild. This is rawhide, this is kangaroo. So it's not gonna be really rough on a horse, but a horse can also push through it and, and ignore it if you don't know how to use it properly. And you can even ride your horse in a halter. Actually, this halter is, is stronger and can be potentially harsher than this hackamore just because of the, the diameter of it. Okay, you can see that the halter is only maybe a quarter of an inch and this hackamore I think is a half inch. It might even be a five eighths, I'm not sure. Think about it this way. If you took a ruler and pressed on your arm with a ruler, and then you took that same amount of pressure with a, a pencil, the pencil would cause more pain, or at least pressure, than the ruler would. So that's the general rule with these. The smaller they are, the more pressure you're gonna get when you put pressure on them. So the halter would actually be more, if I, if I needed to get after a horse, I could do it in a halter. You can bump that horse pretty good with that halter, even more so than you can with a hackamore. The bitless bridles are real popular these days. Personally, I don't like them, and I definitely do not like the mechanical hackamores that, because both of those, the bitless bridle and the mechanical hackamore, they squeeze a horse's nose from front and back, and they squeeze like a vice. Uh, to me, that's, you cut off the, it's just not good. Now, the bitless bridles are not nearly as much as the the mechanical hackamores, and I don't own either one, so I can't even show them to you as an example. Maybe I'll find a picture, put it up here, show you what I'm talking about, but I don't own either one because I just don't think that they are appropriate. All right, snaffle bits. Any bit that has a ring on the side of it and does not have a shank, okay, that's a snaffle bit. And there are lots and lots of different versions of them. This one is an O-ring and this one is a D-ring, and that's based on the, the way the, that the ring is formed. This one looks like the letter D, this looks like the letter O. Okay, How, what's the level of harshness? The smaller the mouthpiece, the more pressure it's going to put on the horse. The D-rings are a little milder because when you put a side pull on this D-ring, that, that's flat and it doesn't put as much pressure. Whereas if you use the O-ring and you pull, that puts a little more pressure on the side of the horse's mouth. Typically, I will start a horse, my young horses, this is one I'm using right now on one of my fillies. I think she has seven rides and I'm riding her in this D-ring snaffle right here. Okay, a little bit about the quality. 
This one is made out of sweet iron. If you go to the tax, not the tax store, but the farm and ranch store and you pay $12 for a snaffle bit, <laughs> that's horrible. The, it, the, the quality of it is horrible. The taste of it's horrible. The horse isn't gonna like it. It's not heavy enough to really do much. Uh, you really should do everybody a favor and throw it in the trash, okay? If, if you wanna get a decent bit, you're probably gonna have to go to a really good tax store or you can order it online but you're gonna to have to pay at least $50 and probably around 75 to get a decent bit like this that, will, that your horse can feel it and it works well and it's, you know, it's gonna be a good bit. Anything less than that, it's probably not very good quality and the, it doesn't feel good in the horse's mouth. Um, and then I'll show you one more snaffle bit. This one is really mild. This snaffle bit has no break in the middle and it's a lot thicker, it's a half an inch instead of, uh, these are three eighths of an inch as far as the diameter of the actual bit. I use this bit on Silver, who's my primary lesson horse because I do have some students that I just can't get them to stop pulling on two reins in a snaffle bit. And so I use this to protect my horse. And it's a really mild bit and it works really well for that kind of a thing. Um, so if you wanna use a snaffle and you don't have good hands, then you know contact me and i'll tell you where i bought this this one's kind of hard to find now here's how i teach let me talk about how you can hurt a horse and i teach this to all of my students everybody that comes to me for riding lessons whether they're a beginner or they've been riding for years or they rode years ago whatever this is what i do i have them hold the bit in their hand like this and i say to them pretend that your hand is that horse's mouth and i want you to watch how, how little pressure it takes on this bridle, on this rein, for you to feel it. And I'll just hold the, that rein like that, and I start lifting. And I, I don't know if you're zoomed in enough to see that, but I'm just using my thumb, and I'm already putting pressure on that bit, and I can feel that in my hand. And so what I tell my students is, if you can feel it in your hand, be assured that that horse can feel that when it is sitting on his tongue, okay? And then I say to that student, what if I were to jerk on that thing? <laughs> that hurts, doesn't it? Okay, and I've actually done this. I had one young lady who had a tendency to be a little rough with her hands and I just, I had her hold that and when she wasn't ready, I jerked as hard as I could and it hurt her hand. And I said, that's what you're doing to your horse. And she got the message, it actually, it worked, she got a lot better. So that's how you hurt a horse, by jerking. How, and this is not a severe bit, but it can be, depending on how you use it. So the key to using a bit is this, slow hands. Pick up, gradually increase the pressure until you get the desired result, and then immediately let go. That's the proper way to use a bit. When you do that, they are not cruel. You'll teach a horse, that horse will learn and also these snaffle bits are made to be pulled on one rein at a time mostly they're side to side pressure you pull with the right rein puts pressure on the left side of the horse's mouth and vice versa that's what they're designed to do now can you pull on both reins you can um, but you need to be careful because there is what's called the nutcracker effect when you pull on both reins depending on how you do it you can put pressure on the horse's gums because his tongue is here, his gums are there. When you do that, there, there is some pressure. So you have to do it in a way, um, and it has to do with the angle of the horse's head. That's a lot more detail than I'm gonna go into today. But I ride almost exclusively in a snaffle bit. I do have one horse that I ride in a curb bit. I'll show you that in a second. And let me say this, I would say at least 90% of the horses are not trained well enough to ride them in a shank bit. Most horses are not trained well enough to understand that shank bit and to respond to it properly. And they probably don't need a shank bit. If you're doing backyard kind of riding, putting your grandkids on your horse, trail riding, that kind of stuff, you don't really need a shank bit. It's not necessary. The shank bit basically is a high level of communication and it's power steering that the vast majority of horseback riders do not need. 
okay? So if you're riding in a shank bit and you don't need it, do yourself a favor, do your horse a big favor, go back to a real simple snaffle bit like this and your horse will love you for it. I'll just show you briefly one shank bit and people can look at this and say, oh, what a cruel thing that is. Look at that big port on that bit. Oh my goodness, you're gonna hurt that horse. Um, and I'm gonna do a couple of more videos in the next week or so on the proper way to use these bits, using some horses as an example. So I'm gonna go into a bit more detail. Um, but this bit is not the least bit cruel if it's used properly, okay? But it can be cruel, of course, any bit can be cruel. You could put a rope in your horse's mouth and it could be cruel if you were rough and mean with it. Um, the thing about shank bits is that they have three pressure points instead of one, okay? When you pull on a snaffle bit, if you take this snaffle bit and you pull with three ounces of pressure, then the horse feels three ounces of pressure in his mouth because there's no way, there's no increase of that pressure. What you pull is what he feels. With a shank bit, when you pull, this shank works as a lever device. And this one I think is two to one. What you do is you look at the side, the purchase here, that's that. And then you say there, there, this is a two to one. So the shank is twice as long as the purchase. What that means is if I pull with one ounce of pressure, it's doubled and it becomes two ounces of pressure on the horse because of the shank. That's part of the purpose of the shanks. It's part of why we have them. But also realize that this has three pressure points and not just one. The, the snaffle bit only pulls on the horse's mouth. That's all. On his tongue and, and possibly on his gums with that, the bit there. This one has pressure on the horse's mouth. It also has pressure on the head stall because watch what happens up here. When I start pulling on the bit, it pulls down on the head stall, so he gets pressure between his ears. And then when the curb strap engages, he gets pressure under his chin. So you have three pressure points on this bit. And if the horse doesn't understand how to give to those pressure points, then he's gonna do the natural thing, which is throw his head up. And how many of you have seen a horse with a shank bit throw his head up? Probably all of you, if you've watched it all, okay? And that's why I say until a horse really understands things they're not ready for a shank bit and what i'll do in future videos is i will show you all the things that a horse needs to know before you put a bit like that on them and it's quite a bit okay so what's my my point here bits are not cruel they actually help you teach the horse they help the horse understand what we want but you have to use them responsibly slow hands that's your takeaway from this video slow your hands down you're not in that big a hurry <laughs> you don't really have to get there that fast slow your hands down and, and i would say slow is fast because what will happen is as you, you do it slowly your horse will understand it better and your horse will respond quicker